how was training with yeah. with Dan considering how good he is that senior year and you I'm sure trying to just suck up everything that you possibly can but I'm assuming you really had not had that type of opportunity to train with him because he was three years older until that high school setting is that accurate yeah no that's 100 percent right so um yeah we never trained together until then yep. and it was you know um it was a mix of uh, you know, some days we train together, some days we wouldn't, right? And it's just a matter of, again, swim different stuff for starters. And Tom, high school coach, is, tries to be pretty specialized with folks. And particularly, me and my brother was a drop-dead pure sprinter <laughs> in, in uh, you know, up until kind of, you know, could get away with a 200 every now and then, but up until college was definitely the shorter stuff was better. Um, and so I trained with, you know, Matt Burke, his teammate, like him and I trained together a lot. Um, but, you know, I, I do remember that like training with my brother, first of all, um, I mean, he's just physically, he's huge. And so there's like this presence of if you're swimming next to him or you're in his lane, um, it just feels, it, it feels t intimidating, but you know what I mean? It does, um, just by the nature of it, even if, even if he's your own brother, um, and there's there's that element i think also there's an element of um you know you base uh, you base what's possible based off what he could do in some ways um and so you know if it's like longer stuff and you know my brother again not not much of a longer trainer at all and we're doing you know let's say he gets we get thrown together we're doing some longer stuff one day and i'm keeping up with them and it's like that feels to me like that's my limitation of, well, he's a lot faster than me, right? And so this is this is the point where I can get to. Um, and so you don't think about like what's possible beyond that necessarily, if that makes sense. That's kind of one thing I kind of remember it was after he was gone, it was, um, you know, it was like, hey, listen, this is, there's nobody else here, <laughs> right? To, to, uh, to push you the same way that, you know, him or Matt could. So that I remember, but I do remember there was a bunch of stuff I did you know, learn from him from a, you know, a mental perspective for sure. Um, and also from a technical perspective, right? Cause he was a very technically sound swimmer. Um, and that was driven again, largely by, by Tom and so our high school coach and learn a ton from him from day one on how to, um, you know, just how to swim better, quite frankly, like there's all these things that you think, you know, um, and then you get to high school and you realize like there's a bazillion things you're doing incorrectly in terms of stroke technique. Right. So that was probably the biggest set of learnings from him, I would say. Not to insinuate that he was taking away from you in any way, but mentally, you know, were you allowed to feel a little bit more like the man when he moved on? Did it kind of allow you to stretch your legs a little bit and, and kind of be a little more confident? Um, I would say, yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I wouldn't refute that, um, you know, if, you, if, I, if I reflect on it now. Uh, and I was never, I want to put it this way, it was never a point of jealousy at all. Right? There was never any point of that, I would say. Um, but... I would also say there's this element of, and I mean, you see this all the time with like, how did this sports team do better all of a sudden after their star player is gone or whatever, right? And at the end of the day, or people graduate, at the end of the day, it's just like, again, like there's probably an element of like, I am not, oh, I'm not expected to be the fastest person, right? And now I am. And, and if that happens, then all of a sudden it's, uh, it's just a different way of looking at things every day. It's like, okay, you're now anchoring this relay. And it will not do well if, if you know, you don't get faster. Um, whereas before, it's like you have this thought of like, ah, you know, you know Danny's going to take care of it. Like, it's fine. <laughs> like, um, and so just having, like, it's just like this implied step up opportunity when he leaves. And, um, you know, and then, you know, then I started hitting my stride and everything else. Um, I think it was, you know, in some ways you also do get more, I think you get more attention from coaches as well, right? Because, um, you know, again, it wasn't just my brother, it was Mac graduating. And then in our club team, we had a, a bunch of people in my brother's class. And so when those guys all leave, you know, you just naturally, there's, there's more eyes on you, right? 
Um, and so I think that helps too, right? You just get, you just uh, have more opportunities to get better. Um, and you see it as such versus before, maybe you kind of let some of them go because uh, you've got a safety net <laughs> in a lot of ways, right? Um, which sounds weird because I know something's pretty individual, but you know, I think there's, there's definitely an element of that. When you don't see that there's this particular opportunity and like, I could be the best person at this or I could be the one anchor in the relay or whatever, I think, you know, there's some stuff that gets left behind that people don't realize. Right. Well, I think you've been great in this interview so far, but we're done with the Dan section. So I'm cool. interested to see if you just explode here in the, in the hey. second part of our, of our interview here now that you can really stretch your legs. All right. Um, I love that. Tell me more about this. Uh, tell me more about your high school coach. I know you're interested to, you wanted to talk more about him. Why do you have such an impact on your life? Um, I mean, I remember saying, I remember saying this when, uh, at our, like our banquet my senior year, like he was, Tom is the most important person in my life, was the most important person in my life outside of my family. Um, and, you know, he's been coaching Seaholm now, I think he's in like his 22nd year. I think he started in like 1999, you know, um, and Tom was doing a lot of stuff that was seen as wacky, bizarre, crazy, um, different, you know, whatever word you want to throw at it. Um, well before a lot of the stuff that we know that is proper swim training now. Um, so like when my brother, uh, you know, my brother started in like 2002 in high school or something like that. I started in 05, but we were doing, you know, uh, Tom just had really unconventional ways of, of training. Um, and, you know, it was technique based thousand percent, right? That was rule number one was like, we got to fix technique before you fix everything else. Um, it was an incredible amount of race pace training. Um, you know, my buddies over at Groves or at Brother Rice, um, were, doing double the volume that we were doing in my first year uh, in second year there. Um, and especially with my brother, like, you know, it was just literally just widths of a six, you know, of a six lane pool. That was one of the things we did a lot of was just like, how can you get, you know, uh, three to four stroke, like full speed push off three to four strokes as fast as you can, like into a turn and back and, like maximize in and out of the wall, maximize your first strokes out, uh, push back your anaerobic threshold, um, you know, that, like that type of thinking, right? And then eventually it's like, you know, one of the sets we did a lot was like 50 50s on 50 seconds and, you know, best average for the most part, right? So, okay, you know, you're, this is gonna hurt for an entire hour basically, right? So, but you gotta hold, you know, by the time I'm senior, you gotta hold, you know, 25-0 for 50 of these, right? Um, and so uh, that, that type of stuff is just kind of, you know, unconventional stuff was what Tom was kind of known for. And it was really, there were a lot of, you know, there were a lot of kids that thought, obviously it was super weird, right? We, we were doing like meditation stuff. We were doing, um, you know, like massage stuff that other people weren't doing. Um, you know, uh, it's just super different, right? And, uh, so that was kind of one aspect of it that, you know, and it really turned me into like, we got to, I got to college and I never amounted to what I should have been in college. And there's a number of reasons for that. But one of the reasons is I was just trained incorrectly. <laughs> right. And um, like when I was at, like, Tom figured out the, the apex way for me to get better. Um, and for the most, you know, for the most part. And um or sorry, a lot of hit my apex, you know what I mean? And, and it's, it's the way a lot of people are training now. Like he was, re he was referencing like, you know, that Michael Andrew does like USRPT, that stuff. Like he was referencing Dr. Russell when I was a freshman in high school. Like he had all, like a all, bunch of his material. Who's a doctor that he bases all his training, that Michael Andrew bases all his training on. So we were doing that in 2005, in 2005. Right. Um, and so Tom's had a ton of success with, coaching sprinters um since then and i think we've won the 200 for relay like as let's see home has at least you know the last 20 years probably 10 11 times something like that it's pretty ridiculous right um and you know it's that type of thing that kind of you know it's it's those types of things that make that happen and then on um 
you know, just kind of personally, mentally, like he, Tom, you know, has a core set of values. We have a core set of values as a high school team, right? Um, and Tom makes you uphold those values, right? And that's everything from, you know, what your priorities are, um, both in and out of the pool. Um, and then, uh, you know, just turning boys into men was always the quote that he used. Like, you come in as boys, you leave as men, right? And, uh, you know, he's, you know, high, high school is a weird time for everybody, um, but, you know, especially, especially boys. Um, and so there's a lot of stuff that, you know, he has helped a lot of kids through um, without any judgment, um, you know, never cuts, never, has never cut a swimmer, um, has worked with kids of all ages and abilities, uh, or not all ages, I'm sorry, it's high school only, right? But all abilities, right? People who haven't ever swam before, um, and turning them into, you know, 55, 54 second hundred freestylers, right? Um, all the way to people like me. So, um, and he's always been somebody I've looked up to. And everybody, you know, everyone who swims for him has nothing but good things to say about him. So, um, like, he's a really special guy. And he's finally started, to, you know, <laughs> Dixie Holmes won a few titles in the last few years. And, you know, he's finally started to get the type of recognition that he's deserved for forever. So um, it's pretty cool to see.